So these are the tattoos I've kind of resulted uh, from my accident recovery. This is really the main tattoo that I got. So my injury level, the date it happened, and the coordinates exactly where I fell. So kind of just a reminder of what I've gone through and what the past four years have been. And it's uh, yeah, kind of a unique story. My name is Dr. Alex Mihalides, and I'm a senior scientist and research chair at Toronto Rehab. Pepper, come closer. Here I am. And my area of work is in developing new technologies to support older people and people with disabilities in their own homes and communities. My name is Christine Lullisher. I'm Alex's wife. I am a registered psychotherapist qualifying. It's a normal, typical life, I guess, as a scientist and academic working long hours. We have two children, a son, Bennett, who is 12, and then our daughter, Drew, who is seven. The four of us really enjoyed going to the cottage uh, in the summer on the weekends and just hanging out as a family. It was the end of summer, uh, 2019. Coming up on Labor Day weekend, and we uh, were up at our cottage just south of Bancroft. The kids were playing and they decided to go on a little walk. That's where things started to kind of go a bit sideways. One of them had suggested going a little bit off the beaten path, but it was a lower lookout point. My son, being only eight at the time, didn't have uh, long enough legs to get back up. That's where it all started, where I started to hear the call for help from my son that he was stuck up there. and like. Any parent immediately wanted to go help him. So I kind of had to, you know, zigzag my way up and weave through, you know, branches and trees and try to find good footing. It was a straight rock, you know, Canadian shield. Rock with one tree, just a small tree coming out. I just remember kind of taking a step and looking down and just feeling everything given out underneath me. He had fallen approximately 30 plus feet. The next thing that I remember is kind of coming to once in a while and, and being in a lot of pain and kind of hearing voices. And then I heard Alex groaning. And I said, is everything okay? And they said, no. I knew then that it wasn't good. My first memory of being at the hospital in Kingston was coming out of surgery where they uh, fixed my, my spine and also my pelvis. He had broken his pelvis and broken three of his vertebrae. Perforated my bladder and broke my ankle. So he has seven fused vertebrae and then his pelvis needed a plate and screws in there. My memory uh, the first thing maybe I asked was about whether I had a spinal cord injury. At that point, it was confirmed that, yeah, there was incomplete spinal cord injury. And so where it affected was his whole, like, hip area and, and bladder and bowels, and that was the area that, that was paralyzed. That's when my mental health really started to spiral. And there's depression that started setting in and of understanding what was going on with me. Because up until then, he thought everything I'll be able to, you know, we were looking at maybe another month and get back to normal. Mentally, I could not put myself in that position where I saw myself walking out of here or living an independent life or returning to my job. I saw him the day that he was transferred into here, and he was in pretty rough uh, shape. He lost, I believe, about 40 pounds. He was struggling with, with pain and an infection. And he was on pelvic precautions, meaning he couldn't do um, a lot of weight-bearing activities. So physically, I still couldn't get out of bed. Um, I had to use a wheelchair. One, because they were worried about my pelvis healing properly. Again, I had no strength in my legs whatsoever. 
Our options were a lot of exercises in supine, so lying on your back position, in a seated position, anything where gravity is not affecting your body. I knew that I had to start to walk, but that wasn't happening. The pain was too great, and then, you know, I just had too much weakness in my legs and everything else. It was definitely emphasized to us how important those first few months were of rehabilitation with the spinal cord injury. He was really so limited by his other injuries, so I think we weren't sure at the beginning how things were going to go. Recovery for um, a patient with Alex's injuries depends on, you know, rate of nerve growth and also the motivation of the patient to really get better. The majority of people who are here need to dig deep and decide, am I going to reconceive how my life will be on the way forward and then work through the pain and discomfort and embarrassment to actually return to their best functional ability? There were days I just did not want to get out of my bed. My physio would come in and I would say to her, sorry, I'm not coming today. And that was not physical. I probably could have done it mentally. I just was exhausted and I just kind of, you know, some, some days just had no hope that anything was going to go anywhere. Christine was vital in helping Alex stay on that positive trajectory. We felt it was really important to try to replicate home as much as possible. We had birthdays here. Alex turned 45 when he was still here, and I turned 40 when he was still here. Christine was here every night and during the day during physio sessions. I would put the kids to bed, and one friend would show up to babysit, and I would go back to the hospital to be able to help Alex. Just having her beside me and advocating and, and talking with me through things, and and encouraging me, you know, again, that's what saved me. She saved my life most days. So the treatment evolved based on the doctor's recommendations to come off of pelvic precautions, and we were able to progress to weight-bearing activities, strengthening of his legs, progressing to ambulation. I've never been so excited to get on a sit-down exercise bike in my life where I was able to actually start to push my legs and to, to see what kind of strength I had. He was up on a walker, you know, the first day. He showed up every day to his physio sessions and went to the gym independently all the time to get stronger. Alex is a determined individual and he put his full effort into his rehab. It was amazing to see the progress over the three months he was at Landhurst. He came in in a wheelchair and just at a really, say, low point. He went from, you know, being in bed and not being able to roll to gradually progressing. And when he went home, he could walk with a cane. The day he left, it was New Year's Eve. And actually on January 1st, so the day after, it was our 10th anniversary. So we decided to renew our vows. It was just such an important moment to really celebrate not only, like I said, you know, 10 years of marriage, but to recognize what we had been through over the past four months and how it had actually brought us closer together. Alex continued to work on his research projects while he was here. And clearly he has a great passion for his research. You could tell that he was always thinking and observing while he was a patient here. There's very few people who could say they have an understanding from both the scientist, researcher side, and the patient. Something like this would have been really useful when I was in rehab, when my physical therapist wasn't available. Absolutely. You could tell that he was thinking, oh, how do I incorporate this into my research, or how do I incorporate this experience into something that I'd like to teach my students. I make sure now that that knowledge piece is always in there right from the beginning, that the stakeholders are involved right from the very beginning. Engaging patients and their lived experience and giving them a voice is where we get some of the rapid and most relevant changes in the healthcare system. The ultimate payoff is that the solutions we're developing, whether it's a technology, a policy, a process, is implemented quicker and is accepted and as actually moves from, you know, 
the research labs into the real world. Alex's story is really inspiring. It's impressive when you see that courage in a patient like Alex. It's one of the reasons I love working here. I've never met a, a more caring bunch of, of individuals. We definitely kept saying thank you to the team over and over again. Everyone, you know, right from the, the top to the bottom uh, were great. They will always be remembered because we know that they were absolutely essential in his recovery and rehabilitation. It's really wonderful to see a colleague come through it. And the fact that he's brave enough to share his story just speaks volumes about him and how he's incorporated his experience into how he conducts research really reflects the kind of person that he is.